morning. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> welcome to the house of God on this All Saints Day. Uh, we welcome all of our first time visitors. If, if you're a first time visitor, please uh, fill out one of the visitor's cards in front of you and put it in the offering tray so we can have a record of your attendance. If you would please turn your bulletin to the announcements. Just to let everyone know that uh, the order of worship will be a little bit different today. We're going to be moving communion to after the sermon because the sermon basically leads us to the table. So just make a note of that. Also, uh, today, there will be a reception after the service in the fellowship hall, so come by and take part in some fellowship and good food. <coughs> On November 14th, we'll be having a community dinner for basically anybody who's invited. It'll be from, it'll be sometime, 5.30 to 8, thank you. And the fellowship hall. So, and also some other small thing, some other stuff that's coming up. A health fair on November nineteenth. Special and prayer services on November twenty fourth and December twenty second at eleven a.m. Worship time. Are there any other announcements? The call to worship this morning is a little bit different. We're going to be, um, certain people out there have been selected to read a line or two from the call to worship, so listen as we open worship this morning. We gather together to work, we gather to worship God with the cloud of saints that surround us. With Abel and Enoch and Noah. With Abraham and Sarah. With Moses. With Rahab. With Gideon, Samson, and David. With those who administered justice and shut the mouths of the lions. With the prophets. With the women who proclaimed the resurrection. Let us worship God together knowing that we worship with those of great faith and those with the faith of a mustard seed, those whose names are written down in great books and those whose names are written in our own hearts. If you would please turn to our praise hymn, number 635, Faith of Our Fathers and Mothers, and please stand. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here this glorious, wonderful day. We thank you for bringing us here for All Saints Day. We give thanks to you, O oh Lord, for allowing people who have come before us to build this church, to allow us to worship you. We remember them this day as they are up there with you. Celebrating. Lord, we give thanks for all these things, but most of all, we give thanks to your Son as, we, as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bethany. I am the new pastor here at Warner Robins. And for those of you who do know me, you might notice I look a little different today. With the collar, and with the... Stole, and that is because yesterday, um, with my communion of saints and with my cloud of witnesses, I was ordained as a um, minister of word and sacrament in the Disciples of Christ tradition. And so I am so honored that you are all here and that this is my first call as an ordained reverend. If there are no other prayers at this time, join me in prayer. 
God who is present, God who is tangible, who is around us right now, I lift up all of the prayers of this community to you. Prayers for strength, prayers for comfort in times of loss. I pray that you hold each one of them so close to your heart that we too feel close to you. I pray for those who struggle through the hard things of life like addictions and food shortages and living in places that are experiencing the devastation of environmental disaster. Be in those situations. Show us how to do your works there, to love and care for those people in those situations. God, I pray for our neighborhood. I pray for the people who you have not yet sent, sent to us but are coming. May we prepare an open house for them. God, I thank you for the saints, for the people who have paved a way for us, the people who when we think about our journeys, those faces that pop into our heads, I thank you for all of those people, for those communities, for those moments that they have shown us a little bit closer to who you are. I pray that you are with us in this service. I pray that you are with us this week, and as we go out to do your works, that you surround us and walk with us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So now we will be doing our stewardship meditation by the none other than Stephen himself. Well, is that time for our service when we have an opportunity to get back? And as an All Saints Day, we remember and celebrate today the many saints that come before us. Who have worked, given generously, provided their gifts, and laid the foundation on which we stand today. Let us also remember that we are still building and rebuilding, that our gifts and service continue to lift the church today and in the future. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, we are told each person should give what they have decided in their hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So, give good heart. Please give as you are able so that God may take those gifts, transform them and multiply them with a blessing on those He wants us to serve. That are coming from that. Please join me now. Let us pray. God, we have given from our hearts. We have given what we can, and we know that you will do with it only what you <coughs> can do. We pray that we are good stewards of this offering, that we use it, to further your works on this world. We pray that you multiply and that you use our blessings to bless our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy All Saints Day! Saints Day. Let us listen from the word, starting in the book of Ephesians, starting in chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Printed on the back of your bulletin. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all, and through him, through all, and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of God, Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, When he ascended on high, he made captive, captivity itself captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean? but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same who ascended above, far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of one faith 
and of knowledge of the Son of God to, me, to maturity, to the measure of the full statue of Christ. This is the word of God, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today, as we celebrate All Saints Day, I must say this is one of my favorite liturgical holidays. Fancy word for church holidays. <coughs> the celebration of All Saints Day is a holiday that is celebrated by people all around the world, in all different cultures and different denominations. It goes by different names. Some call <coughs> it All Hallows Day. Some, Day of the Dead. Others call it the Feast of the Saints. But whatever you choose to call it, the idea is to celebrate the saints, those people who have gone before us, those who are the faith heroes of the church and also the heroes of our own personal journeys, family members, friends, acquaintances, all those who have marched from this life into the next. There is something about setting aside a day in which we honor the lives of the saints that feels important, even sacred, to many. And today, we are in a unique position to celebrate what the saints have done for this community of faith, to, and at the same time to dream about where they are leading us forward. As I have started my, career, my position here at Warner, First Christian Warner Robins, I have loved hearing the stories of the grand history of this community, about how a small group of people met in a high school, then in a fellowship hall, and eventually in the building we are sitting right now, about the Von Almonds, the Young Bloods, the Hicks, or when Tom told me about Herb Shaw, Tom wrote to me in an email, but as for someone in this church who has had an impact on me, Herb <coughs> Shaw is that person, for without his ins insistence for me to attend church and church functions, I would have never rediscovered God. That is a saint. These lives of those who have gone before us, they matter. They shape who we are, and they have paved the path for many of us to become a little bit closer to God. And of course, when we take time to celebrate the saints, there's a certain level of sadness that comes with it. I don't believe that we were ever created to taste the experience of death. We were created for life. But we all know that death is a reality. We look around and we see loss. We think of people we love so dearly and we can't help but think they should be here. Even when we can acknowledge that death is sometimes a welcomed relief for the one who is suffering, it still stings, doesn't it? If we think about All Saints Day, in the lens of celebration and stopped at that, we would be ignoring the complexity of the human experience. As important as it is to celebrate the saints, it is equally as important to honor our feelings of sadness, sorrow, and grief that come with death. We see this in scripture. Just a few weeks ago, we read the story of Jesus weeping with Mary and with Martha. The texts that we hold as sacred and as true are full of prayers of lament. Those who are crying out to God in their darkest moments. We read the Psalms that ask the daring and bold and brave question, Why God? And how long, O oh Lord? And this grief isn't a bad thing. In fact, it's a very holy thing. Author and theologian Nicholas Wolterstorff says in the preface to his book about the loss of his own son, Grief is the existential testimony to the worth of the loved one. That worth abides. Every lament is a love song. In a world of dichotomies, we can be moved towards balance. That we don't have to be sad or happy that we don't have to grieve or celebrate, that we can hold both and do both at the same time. We can sing a love song of lament with both joy and heartache, a love song that fills the air with melodies of sadness, tenderness, and also of happiness and of sweet memories. And a verse of that love song is to be inspired by the saints 
to move forward with God, what God has for each of us. In our text today, it, sounds, it says that we are bound in unity through one baptism. That is what connects us with the saints. We know that in our baptisms, we are baptized with the same water with all that the saints before us were baptized in. The word saint in Greek can literally be translated to holy one. A saint is the one who is doing the holy work of transformation and love. The authors of the New Testament included everyone in the body of Christ as a saint. The sainthood is what connects those living with those who are living in life after life. Friends, many of you know the disciples of Christ presence here in Warner Robins is changing. We are moving together in a new way, in a way that will include a new name, a new vision, a new church entirely. But make no mistake, as we prepare to close this chapter of First Christian Church Warner Robins, that which connects us in our baptisms will not close. <clears throat> it will never close. We are forever connected in one baptism, in one Lord, in one faith. When we are baptized, we make a promise to God. Yes, that is part of it. But we also make a promise to one another. Often we call it a baptismal covenant. A, ba a promise or covenant to love each other, to support each other, to care for each other. A promise to walk faithfully together through all life has to offer. And this promise does not end when our lives on earth end. No, this is an eternal promise. I believe, I truly believe that the saints continue to uphold their baptismal covenants and will be walking with us into our new chapter. The saints serve as a guide, a way to connect us with the wider body of Christ. When reflecting on the importance of all saints and of saints, one of the elders said, See, seeing the saint, saints has helped me regain my footing. This is a passage about unity, oneness in Christ, but at its heart, it is a call passage. If you ever doubt your call, think back to your baptism, not just baptism in water, but the moment that you felt loved and accepted into community, the moment that you heard God for the first time, when you were baptized in the presence of God and of spirit. The one baptism is where we received our call, where we died with Christ and rose again to do the work of love and transformation in this world. The author, author of Ephesians wants the church in Ephesus to know, to like really know that each of them has something of value to offer. Just as the saints offered their gifts of work to God, we too are welcome to share our gifts, to give freely, to live into the hope of our calling. When we think about the great saints, it's easy to think, <coughs> well, I am no saint. I'm not a hero of faith. But what this passage reminds us is that we are all called. Excuse me. <coughs> My professor and author, Kim Long, often says to her seminary students who are just starting in their vocational ministry, your baptism is sufficient for your calling. Every single one of us has something to bring to the table, has something to offer. <clears throat> we are called by the God who knows every part of us. The youngest among us and the oldest among us are called. The rich and the poor, people who are single and people with great big families are called. Your baptism is sufficient for your calling. Practical thinkers and big dreamers, the abled and the disabled are called. Your baptism is sufficient for your calling. Those with gifts <clears throat> of teaching with a prophetic voice and those with gifts of tender care are called. Your baptism is sufficient for your calling. The extroverts with big personalities and the quietly faithful are called. Those who grew up in the faith those who are new to the faith and those who are still coming to faith are called. 
Friends, your baptism is sufficient for your calling. Hear it. Believe it. What it means to be, what it means to walk with a community of saints is to recognize that everyone has gifts to offer. To remember that we are not the ones who give or who save or who transform. Rather, we, in mutual partnership with those around us and with God, do the work of giving, of loving, and of transforming. I love this phrase that the author uses, the hope of our calling. Because this calling that has been placed upon us to be a faithful community, a community who mourns together, that is made up of peacemakers, that loves radically and builds bigger tables, well, it is rooted in hope. And it's rooted in the hope that Christ, that when Christ ascended, he left us with grace upon grace upon grace with the gifts to do the work, with the Holy Spirit to walk alongside us. It is rooted in the hope that God is actively moving among and through us. It is rooted in the hope that death never has the final word. It is rooted in the hope of God's love and faithfulness. It is rooted in the hope of resurrection. And friends, that kind of hope, well, it is what inspires us to continue the work that the saints have set up for us to do. So yes, we will mourn together that which is over. We will sing the love song of the saints, a, song, a love song to First Christian Church of Warner Robins. We will hold our sadness tenderly and care for the anxiety that comes at the end of a chapter. The song that we will sing for First Christian Church Warner Robins will be a melody filled with celebration, with sweet memories, and of course, with love. And as we close this chapter and we look forward to the new chapter of a new church plant right here, we will do so not with fear of the future, but walking hand in hand with the saints and with the hope of our calling. Amen. So as Chris mentioned, we have changed the order today of our worship service because we believe that everything leads, all of our worship leads to this table. I love the table because I love this image that everyone around the world comes to the table each week. They come and they get fed and they get nourished and it looks a little different in different traditions, but the idea is the same. There is bread and there is truth, there is something from the vine. But today, on All Saints Day, we get to take that image and we get to widen it. We get to think of this table as a table that spans across time and space. That the people who have gone before us are sitting and eating at this table with us. That those people who are in your hearts right now, the people you loved and cared for and continue to love, are also at this table. The saints are with us. And they dine with us. And this is where the work starts. Right here, we come to the table to get nourished so that we can do the work that God has set out for us to do. <coughs> to build new churches, to welcome new people, to look different, it's all going to start here at this table. So come to the table. Come to be nourished. Come to be fed so that we can do the work together with the saints. Today we're going to do communion a little bit differently. <coughs> we will be doing it by intinction. So what that means is that you will come forward and you will take the bread that is gluten-free, and then you will come to the left or to the right to receive from the cup. I will hand you the bread, because you never grasp for God's love. It is always given to you. So join me now in our communion hymn, which is printed in the bulletin. And the name of it is Escaping Me. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. For I received from the Lord and the... What I have also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he gave him thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is my new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death and saving grace until he comes again. Let us all pray. O oh God of tender mercies, thank you for our daily bread and cup. And now for the bread of the Spirit that we break together. Fill each one here with a sense of your abiding and guiding presence. Be with us in these moments of renewal as we prepare for the task of being living servants. We seek to fulfill your will now and day to day during this coming week. Amen. Come forth. Now the table is set. We've now reached the end of our service. We will be sharing in our benediction in a unique way today. Today's benediction will be shared by Curtis and by JT. Curtis is one of our longest standing members here at First Christian and JT is our newest member. Both are saints. <coughs> Hear now the benediction. On your way rejoicing with the saints. Go on your way doing the work of the longest ever. Go on your way loving and caring for others. Go on your way knowing what it's Wait. Go, go on your way knowing you're not alone. Go on your way with hope for the future. Let us go on our way with rejoicing and with singing. We will be singing our song of going forth, which is now printed in your bulletin. The alt when the saints go marching in, and I passed out some instruments.